<clears throat> so I want to keep on talking about the Python development environment and I also want to introduce uh, printing which we've done already in video one program comments variables reading input from the keyboard performing uh, calculations or manipulating our data with either putting strings together remember a string is a sequence of characters as opposed to an integer which is a number or a float which is a decimal number or a boolean <coughs> which is either true or false and then we'll leave it at that and then I'll create a different video for performing a data output uh, creating data output so let's go ahead and get started we know that we can print something to a screen so hello here is a sequence of characters if we do print hello one two three and then type some symbols then python's like sure i'll print it for you and, and python prints it for us nothing outrageous or the concept is very important let's go ahead and create a, a file and we'll go ahead and put it over here and if i can move this screen i think my keyboard's stuck there we go there we go okay so this is a string we can uh, print them to screen nothing really crazy we can also print for example um liking python and it prints a single quote for us what if we want to say um, that we read a book for example I read uh, Python programming book Python gets confused what we have to do is we have to tell Python how to print those double quotes so we do that notice that we put three double quotes at the start and at the end and this should get us our desired result I read Python programming <clears throat> from video one you know that uh, this is called a Python script so we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, can we save it let's save it as well we're gonna save it as sample to a so we do that and comment explain what the program does we're gonna create a program here that collects three grades from and a user those are the users of our program average the grades and display them to screen so that's how we should write comments comments should not explain what each line of code does because when you work in programming usually you're going to be reading the code in the future or other programmers and so they know how to interpret statements what they want to know is okay what's this piece of code doing so that's what we do at the top we, we explain to them what the piece of code is doing so let's go ahead and save this file and if we run it 
nothing happens and that's okay because this pound sign and this pound sign tells python that it's not actual code to execute it's just information let me discuss the concept of a variable so a variable displays uh, saves uh, values so for example if we do my name equals John what Python does for us is it creates a space in its memory and it references or it points to uh, a collection of characters John right so so the variable references the value John we can visualize this in the Python tutor remember pythontutor.com you, you can actually help us visualize what the code is doing so we have my name equals John so it's mimicking memory so in its memory it says okay you want me to create a my name variable I will and the value that I'm assigning it to it is John and that's what we want how can we verify that well we can print to screen and then we run it so now the value is John you cannot do print my name and expect it to print John what this means to Python is like oh you want me to print the sequence of characters my name sure I will do that for you you see so John and then my name because Python even though we think we're telling it well print me the value that's in this variable my name Python's gonna be like no no I'm gonna print my name because that's how I was programmed another thing we can do is we can and we can we can go back let's visualize this just so that we can make it clear so we do print my name it prints it to screen and this we get rid of this quote and then print my name it prints it but you notice that this is actually a sequence of characters it has nothing to do with the variable my name that's important to understand if you remember this you will save yourself a lot of uh, problems while you're doing uh, homework assignments and class assignments okay so another thing we can do is we can perform operations on our data so if we change this va variable to first name And we assign it the value John and then we create a last name variable and we assign it the value John Doe we can tell Python to display it to screen how do we do that huh? we can say last name And then we, with this, we're telling Python, put the strings together or concatenate them and give me the values that first name and last name reference. In this case, we know they reference Doe and John, right? Doe and John. Let's go ahead and run this. And that's what we expected, Doe, John. So what we did here is we set the values, first name and last name to John and Doe. And then we print it and then the plus sign we're telling python put this string this string and this string together and display it to screen so python does that for us let's go ahead and uh, visualize this in the python visualizer so that you all can see what the memory looks like for these variables 
So as you can see, now the memory is like, okay, you want me to create a first name variable with value John and the last name variable with value though, I will do that for you. And it does that for us. So that's important to understand. We can also perform um, mathematical operations on numbers. For example, if we have a, let me see, what can we do here? Something simple, nothing, we don't want anything complicated. We wanna make sure that, that you all are understanding how these variables work. Say, I just want to set a value variable x to 5 and then variable y to 10, and then I want to display the result of uh, adding those two values and dividing them by 2. So we go ahead and create a result variable, and we do result equals order of operations is important in Python right only well let me see let's add them to let's say we do 25 plus 25 i'm sorry so just so that we can show that order of operations is important so if we do x plus y divided by 2 then python's gonna go ahead and do that for us let's print it print result Whoa, 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 what happened here? Well, we didn't follow order of operations, right? Because 25 plus 25 is 50 divided by 2 should be 25. So to do that, we have to make sure that we tell Python by using the parentheses that we force it to use the order of operations. So then it gives us the correct answer, right? 25 plus 25 is 50 divided by 2 is 25. So that's important. One other thing I want you all to understand is that we can reassign variables. So we have that and say then we want to do x equals 50 and y equals 50. And then we want to do the same operation on it. And then we want to print the result. What will happen? It prints 25 over here at the bottom and then 50. So what it did is we assigned 25 to both of them and then we did this and it operation and then it displayed 25. But then we're like, well, now I want you to be 50 and you 50. The same formula, x plus y divided by 2. Give me the result, and the result is 50. So in Python, you can assign variables, and you can also reassign them. So that's important to know because it'll help us in the future. As far as naming variables, the book recommends this convention. So, so if we have a simple variable name, then, then that's how we name it. If we have, for example, first name, then let's follow this convention, first underscore name. So that's important because it'll make our programs easier to read and uh, will be consistent across the board in the classroom. Let's see. What if uh, we did operations on whole numbers? What if we want to do operations on uh, payroll? So say hourly rate, I make uh, 10, 75 an hour. What did I do? I make uh, 10, 70, oh my God, one of the keys is stuck. Oh, we want uh, 75. And I worked hours worked equals 21.5. And then we're telling Python, go ahead and multiply them. 
for you. Tell them and the multiplication symbol is the asterisk. And then by hours word and display to screen for me. So we can also work with decimal numbers. And Python will do that. Now, going back to our problem, we said we were going to collect three grades from end user, and then we're going to average the grades and display them to screen. Well, I want to talk briefly about how to collect data from the keyboard. And Python makes it very simple. For example, first name equals and then we use this function input and then we say enter your name so so what we're doing here is we're telling python i want you to collect data from the user so that the user knows what we want them to type display this to them let's run this piece of code let me close this so we can start a new one So run so we run it keyboard stuck f5 okay and as you can see python's like prompting the user to enter something so when the user types john and hits enter what happens is Python gets the value John, saves it into the variable first name, and we can verify that by printing first name. To make it more explicit, we'll go ahead and type you typed, no, 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 that's too generic, good evening. So what we're learning here is that we can use print to print a sequence of characters and we can also refer to a variable as long as we have a comma. If we didn't want to put the comma, we could do this, but I'll use a comma. So let's see what's going to happen here. My name is... My keyboard is getting stuck. John. So then we said print good evening and whatever the user type for first name so that's why python's like good evening john okay next is that was this reading um data from the keyboard what if we want to read numbers from the keyboard so if we uh we're just gonna be generic number enter a number and then we tell python okay i want you to multiply the number times five python's gonna say sure i will do that for you so let's see what happens here So my name is John, and Py oh, what happened here? No error, but Python displays this five times, and we're like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I wanted to type a number. So let's go ahead and type a number. Five, five. Oh, it displayed five, five times. So what this means to Python is, oh, this is a repeating operator. Whatever value this has, I'm going to repeat it five times. But that's not what we want. You know, it's nice that we can have a shortcut for displaying a value x number of times. But what we want is we want to type a number and then we want Python to multiply it by 5. To do that, we treat it as a number by using the function int. So by typing int, open parentheses, close parentheses, now we're telling Python the user is going to enter a number, treat it as a number, don't treat it as a string. 
let's go ahead and run this and we type 5 so now that's the result we want now if we want to enter a decimal number and multiply it by 5 we can do that too say we type 0.5 so then it types it, uh, the result is 2.5 because our formula is number times 0.5 or number times 5 and then we print the result very important uh, concepts here now we should be ready to complete our program collect three grades from end user average grades and display them so let's be nice right so no no never mind that let's collect the data so we say grade one equals and we want to treat it as a number and then we want to get input from the keyboard and this is what the user is going to see enter grade one and then we'll repeat it two more times what did we do? Shift N, Control C. No, 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 no. Something. This keyboard is getting stuck. So we want to get grade one. We want to get grade two. And then grade three. We have one variable here, so we're saying enter grade one, assign it to grade one, enter grade two, assign it to grade one, enter grade three, assign it to grade one. We don't want to do this. By doing this, what's going to happen is Python is going to over keep on overwriting grade one, and we're only going to have one value. So we need to create three different variables, and we'll identify them with numbers. Now we have grade one grade 2 and grade 3 and we're telling Python treat them as decimal numbers now we want to average them remember order of operations is important so we put parentheses and then we do our summation for the three grades and then we divide it by 3 and then we want to print it and then we want to run it we'll run it on a, on a new shell So let's see what happens. We have 100, we have 90, we have an 80, and then that's an average of 90. So we collect the data, treat them as decimals, we perform a mathematical operation on them, we average them, we sum them first, and then we divide by 3, and then we print the average. And that's how we perform a operations it, the same would apply for other calculations order of operations is always important remember multiplication and division are first subtraction and addition are second so if you want those to be first you always have to make sure that you put parentheses around them so that python understands and knows what you want it to do Otherwise, your calculations are not going to be correct. That's all I wanted to cover as far as variables. So I hope uh, this gives you a clear understanding of what variables are and uh, helps you understand a little bit more about Python and if you have any questions, by all means, post your questions on the discussion forums as discussed in class or ask me during class.